Good evening guys, welcome to the Cribs Hangout. Um, today we're doing a special on um, fleet builds for dredges and for all of the kickside chores. Um, got a small panel with us today. Um, we have got some space left on the panel if anybody in the chat wants to join us. Um, all we ask is that you've got obviously a microphone um, to join us and something to say. Um, we've got Panda here today with us. We've got um, Cute Pie from PNLS, uh, J Boy from Gimp's Hiram, um, and Rig Piggy is going to be joining us very shortly. He's um, just otherwise engaged at the minute. So um, I think what we're going to do is I'll just hand over to Panda and he's just going to have a little chat with you and uh, we'll go from there. Yeah, so we put up a poll on the page about um, what people most wanted to see or wanted help with, I think the main outstanding piece was a lot around the chores and Kick's eyes intent to throw more AI battle after AI battles and people wanted help with the dredging, people wanted help with mini raid etc so we're kind of just going to go through some builds, we've got some high level builds for dredges which can do four to five dredges we're, and then we're going to try and go down to lower, have a look at some lower builds, show you what the HNC value is. There's a lot of players out there that know this already, but this is more so just responding to the page and show show you how we do it. So I think first things first, let's go. Let me share my screen. Let's just get rid of the pawn. Um, right. Okay. So this is mine. So happy to share this. Um, this is my build that I've just refitted to now. Um, big reason for this, and this again goes back to the HNC. So for all those people out there that are wondering, and you, the amount of PMs you get, why do you have a blank HNC in there? The absolute reason for a blank HNC is it weighs three tons, <laughs> and it gives you 50% radioactive defense to every ship in the fleet if kept alive. So for dredges, kind of a must, and gives you absolutely everything you need from a radioactive point of view for three tons. So that's in as the flag. Then I've got two of the v V2Cs in there. The reason it's the C is the C gives you more inbuilt radioactive defense, gives you 40% standard, whereas the H gives you 20 um, what you'll see in there is it's actually not kitted out with anything but a cut one. Reason being is I don't want any more weapons on there. I don't need them. Um, the only thing you could do, you can see I've got a bit of extra weight, and I'll come on to that in a minute for people who might struggle driving this fleet. But basically, it's got the turn speed ranked to turn on the pin thimble. So actually... To get away from the fast ships, you can do so pretty quick. This ship's just a lead ship to get you into a position with a track to fire your Mastodons, which are at the back here. If you actually look at this, the fleet, it's kitted out fully with Evade, um, purely for the, the Javelin-style weaponry in the dredge fleet, in the dredge base. They're the ones that will hurt you from a distance. As long as you keep your, your fleet moving, the mortars and the brimstones won't touch you. Um, reason I put agility on for the dredges is purely because it gives you evade, but it also gives you slow resistance. This is purely for tackling the big ships in the in the dredge. Um, they will stun you, and the torpedoes will hurt like hell. So the more stun resistance you have, this ship's fast. It can get away from it. So you want to make sure you've got, even if you're not using this fleet, agility system for dredges is the way forward. Speed System 3, obviously. Um, I put the Fallout armor on mine. Um, I've only just done that. It's recently new. Reason being, again, gives you explosive and missile defense. A lot of the ships in the dredge fleet are missile. So to increase your missile defense is probably a wise thing, So which is why I've changed to that. But you could also have either compound or the alloys that gives you missile or ballistic, and then obviously solid fuel booster just to give you the range. So there's two of those and that's why they're in there. I don't send both of them into the battle. You send one and leave the other with a HNC on the outside, and I'll come on to that in a minute. Mastodons, heavily kitted out with evade, laser targeting, so the missiles redirect onto targets. Siege, just because they're the daddy, and 
D51Bs, just to add extra firepower on the fleet, speed system again, and, and fallout armor. Um, that's mine. Um, the way you drive it, <laughs> H&C and one of these ships stays on the outside, and one the lead ship goes in with a mass a good two to three inches behind. Um, Snooky and Lady J will probably be able to measure that out quite easy. And, uh, yeah, when this one dies, you bring in the other one. But this fleet can do four, sometimes five, depending on how you drive. The reason I've left the extra weight on is some people do tend to struggle with driving fleets, not calling anyone noobs. Um, and it gives you the option to put on the stun cannon, if I can ever find it. Hey, where's it gone? There you go. You can put a few of these bad boys on, on your lead ships, for no additional weight cost, really. And they'll stun the ships as they get close to you to explode or to do the damage. So you've got that option. If you can drive the fleet, then what I would suggest is um, up in your flanks or your flak on it, your... your uh, bleh, your hail, sorry. Bacon, that's where they are. Huh? I see if you're going to Forsaken, that's where you'll find the... Uh... Balance. Yeah, completely. And, and to be honest with you, this is just the dredge version, and this is the reason why we're showing this one, is because you can... The, the reason why we use mass is because mass are interchangeable. You know this yourself, Chase. So actually, for a drag base, you don't need that. You just need you can take that out and put in something like a, a Triton. If you've got a Harlock Triton, they're always the best ones. And this this is all you do to stop the mortars coming in. Ten hail A's. You'll see the weight advantage in a minute of this, and the reason why it's good. So this is all I have. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, just a quick one, rather than having to go through all of that all of the time, if you press con control and click, it'll keep the same weapon going on each other. Uh, oh, shit. Yeah, cool. I'll, I'll learn that one. I'm a computer noob. Can I ask a question? Yeah, sure, fire away. Um, well, when you're driving this fleet, are you using macros, a gaming mouse, or are you nope. just driving with a standard? Just mouse and, yep, just mouse and keyboard. Okay. Just for everybody's edifice. So the, I, if, I you, lit <clears throat> if you li use um, just a hail storm or a hail storm on your HNC, and you only actually target ships or target um, target stuff, you, your HNC won't move anywhere. It'll just sit in the in the same spot. Yeah. But you do have to if you're using clicking anywhere on the ground, as to speak. To move your ship, you will have to obviously move your HLN and see or stop it. Easiest way is just to press one and um, press down. Down. That will keep keep it stopped. Yep. And then literally, that's there. You go. Same four ships. Just change the lead. Put a Harlot Triton in. Doesn't weigh much. It's armorless. I leave that at the back and I bring it along. That takes all, all the mortar fire and that fleet will do. Um, your entire mini mission for 18 coins, or was it about 10, 12 hours repair? Yeah. So, so th this is just the high level. So obviously, people who've got the big ships, you know, and you you want to spend a bit of money. This is the sort of way we do it. I this is how I do it. I know Jay does the same. Um, Earth, Rob, you guys all do. Mastodons are the way to do it because they're. They're expensive. They're only expensive if they get hit. That's the key to remember. You, you your flagships are the ones that will take the damage. The mastodons that keep them out of the way. That's where your repair costs come down. So that that's my one. I think the key to emphasise to people so that everyone out there's got different sheet fleets, um, different levels. <clears throat> If you've got a HNC or you've got one not built because you won another one at the Christmas raid, it's five days to build one blank, and that'll give you any fleet you've got straight away. That's 50% defense straight away for you. Yeah, that's a really good point, and, um, you know, we should be, everybody should just sort of uh, be looking at it 
in a massive way because it makes so much difference in so many things it would do, especially in the, in the new age of uh, radioactive weapons. It's going to be um, real good. So um, what I've come up with, I've come up with a little build for lower levels, which I'll share with you. Um, just for doing mini raids, um, it's mostly researchable tech and like the use of the mercury in the spectre sub. Um, so I'll just share this with you. Hopefully we can share it. Uh, so I've got the spectre here. It's just a distractor, so it's just got um, one havoc, one torpedo on it. Um, speed system. <coughs> Um, it's got battery three, so it can be picked up by um, the sonar in, in the um, actual fleet themselves. So that's all you need is a distractor. That's the same as what you would in um, in a drag base as well. Obviously, if you've got Reaver Scout engine to add a bit of extra um, speed to it, you can you can stick that in, or you can stick some V armors in just to add a bit of speed to it. Um, what we've also got. If we just go through back to here, so you've got that one, and and then we've got some any siege missiles will do on the Mercury. So just stick a couple of siege missiles on there, strike missile, and um, just one hailstorm and a couple of phalanx um, anti missiles. Again, with the uh, evade armor and uh, guidance scrambler, gives you a decent amount of evade um, on the ship. So obviously you can see this one's not got any retros on it. If you retro it, it's only going to get better. Um, I mean, the this fleet here, you can instant repair on 40s in the mini mission. So you know, it's it's a really good good way of doing it. <clears throat> um, don't know if anybody else has got anything they want to add to this build. I think no. I think it's about working with what you got. And I think the the one thing that people forget is the Alliance crib page, um, the actual one that Larry and the, all of us run. You can message it with build advice or what you've got, and you know the guys on there. W one of us will pick it up and reply to you. That's what it's there for. I think we we tend to do a lot of uh, not mention not slandering any other shows, but we tend to cover off of things a lot of things in bulk, and people need to work to their needs and what they've got built so if anyone needs help with any of this just as a side show sort of style thing you know you we've got the battle pirates crib page um on facebook and you can message that at any time and you know we'll respond to you and we'll help you yeah um, it might not be straight away because obviously we're all busy um doing other things and and stuff like that but we will definitely get back to you in like the day at the most, really, um, you know, we obviously do it in our spare time. So, you know, when we get time, we'll help you as, as much as we can, really. Hey, Irv. Uh, the only point I'd make on your build is your your Spectre's a lot slower in your build here than your Mercury's. Yeah. If you're, if you're, if you're building, if you're if you're giving advice to build a lead, I try and build my lead one point speed above my fleet lead, my fleet speed. Yeah, it's it's my fault. I didn't put the V8 armors on it. Um, and you can, for those that have played like me, I've never had a chance to get the Spectres. You can use a Nighthawk to do this it, as efficiently as you can use a Spectre. You just have a little less downtime you've got to work with. This is very true, and you've obviously got a higher um, base speed as well. So, you know, a Nighthawk you can use. Um, I'm just really using old attack just because it's... Um, it's more likely that the lower levels have got. And I, I would really suggest if you do have Nighthawks and you build a lead Nighthawk, put thrusters on it because it turns like a brick and it'll screw you every time. Yeah. <laughs> Very good point, unless it's ranked. So, actually, if I, I'll just change this up. So, if you put the V armors on there, so B2B, doing the same as what Panda done, just put that like that. So if you do that, that brings it up to 17 and a half, and I think if you change that to engine three, yeah, 19 and a half, which is just above that of the Mercury. You can use B torps to get the extra speed too. That's what I do. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I was just literally just doing it just because it's it's a build with mostly researchable tech. So 
Okay. You know, well, the B Corp, the B Corps will keep your repair down if you if you make a mistake. Yeah, because you've got that extra bit of speed. I mean, as you can see in here, like at dock eleven, you've got like ten k in weight left. So there's a lot you can do with the fleet. You can add extra armor to the Mercury's if you want and stuff like that. Um, but this this fleet will quite quite happily do forty um, forsaken mission targets for next to nothing repair time. Um, if you drive it right, you can get it down to sort of like a minute repair time. So, just thought I'd put that out there and help you out. Um, has anybody else got anything that they want to want to share? Yeah, I was going to say with these, uh, whenever you do decoys, Reaver Engine. I say you say you're trying to do research, but uh, Reaver Engine just on that alone takes it up to over 23 combat. So if you can get those Reaver Engines and do it, that's the best way to do it for any decoy. Definitely, I 100% agree with that. I, I would I would throw in there that you don't want to go too fast. I put reavers on one of mine one time, and going too fast is just as hard as going too slow. Well, you, you just move as a group, single select, move the decoy, and then stop it and keep it ready to stop. I mean, the de if you're playing with decoys, it's an active game. You're, you've got to be ready and in there to control it. It's not point and click anymore. Yeah, but it makes it, if, if you're closer to your fleet speed with your decoy, it makes it easier to drive. That's true. Rob, have you got anything you want to add, mate? I'll get rid of this in a minute. Let's get rid of this bill. I've got a question, and I don't actually know, well, I don't know the answer to this. The thermal range, you know the big ships in the dredge? Obviously, yeah. they've got thermal on. What's the range? I think it's 65, but I'm not sure on that. It's about that, because um, I know they will pick you up if, if you've got um, CZ torps on, but if you've got yeah, beams on, you can outrange them. Well, you've got to sideswipe it. You can't just like go head on. You've got to kind of, you've got to go in and turn out as you get to the, as you get in range. The reason I ask is, anyone tried Reapers on the big ships? I have, mate. Yeah. Um, what I do is, um, I use a similar fleet to what you've put up there. Um, what I use though is <clears throat> rather than using an HLNC as a new ship, I use a Frostburn, mm. uh, which I basically use as a distractor really. Um, I use it for two reasons. One reason is that if, as those ships that are fast moving come in towards you, um, you can slow them down. So it stops them from actually running into you, the ones that actually chase you. And the ones that go around in a big circle, <clears throat> it slows them down enough so that uh, my mastodons can target <clears throat> like two, as instead of like it being running past, and you only having the time to target one and kill one at a time, you can actually kill two. Um, obviously, it also puts out all of the fire in the um, in the dredges as well. So, you know, what, it's really good for limiting damage. Um, and what I do is I generally take all of the small ships out and take the island mm. out leaving the two um, hulks and then they go in afterwards with reapers and just take the, the two hulks out. I can get it down to like a three coin repair doing it like that. Yeah, I'm just thinking because like we're talking about how we help low levels as well. Every alliance has got a, sh a spread of levels. I've actually never tried it. I'm just seeing if, if people have got reapers like mine that are 15 cat, they surely can't be spotted. Well, not only that, if it if it ranges and it doesn't pull the actual big ship, couldn't you go and take out the take out the runners and then go in with say like interceptors and take out them with deluge? Because I know Rob's got a set of deluge interceptors and they work really well. Oh, for sure. I mean, you, there's there's a number of different ways to do it. Um, you know, the trouble is that a lot of people steal dredges, don't they? So. You know, if you can take them in one go, you want to be preferably taking them in one go. Yeah. And prepping them, and then, you know, if it's at an acceptable cost. I mean, I think that like if I one shot them with mine, um, you know, the maximum repair that I get really is about seven coins for like a sixty-one. So, um, up to me, that's an acceptable amount for me to ensure the safety of my dredge, really. Um, 
you know, a lot of people take a lot more damage. Um, it's, a lot of it is down to the way that you drive it. There, yeah. there is also working as an alliance as well. I mean, it is an alliance. I mean, <clears throat> if you can get your alliance to help you, one can prep it for you and then you go in kind of thing. Yeah, if I mean, if, the, if you're prepping it with the right stuff. You can always leapfrog each other as well, couldn't you? So, you know, one prep one comes out, one goes in. Yeah, one takes that one and then when he's finished that one, he preps for the person who prepped before. You know, it's always that well, that way of doing it. Keep everything nice and fair and stuff. <clears throat> and it will cut your cost down as well, because you're not repairing as many nice. fleets. So, are we saying it can be done? It can be yeah. done, yeah. Cool, so, there you go. There, anyone who's got somebody with our 15 cat reapers, go in, sink the bottom ship, retreat, take the top trip, retreat, send your F whatever you need to do to kill the little ships in and then you've got the island on its own so again teamwork again you can prep it down I mean I, I know that I prep some for um, I do prep some for Stephen who's on the panel now you know I've, I've prepped quite a few for him with my fleet and I all I all I actually leave in usually is just one rocket turret so he doesn't get any damage at all so you can free rest to do for free. If you yeah, got, you can, you, if you, if got, you can. Carry on. So you you can set that up for someone very easily. Like with the fleet that he was using, there's you can really feed low levels if you wanted to. Mm. I, I think that's the key. Like you know, Tyler. What alliance is Tyler in now? Um, I think he's joining BOPB. To be honest. Boo! Ooh. Gotta shut that shit out. <laughs> Not happy with that. Nah. But um, we got we got to, we got the Tyler challenge going on, so we'll update you on what the Tyler challenge is later. But it's quite an interesting one. Uh, he's going to take a big player out in the game. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think I think what's worthwhile point as well, guys. While we're discussing dredge builds, what retros help you out in dredges? Avoid for a start. So if we yeah agreed so. Let's think. There's there's people out there again, not with high powered fleets like it, like the big coiners have got. What can they retro to have make their lives more easier in drag bases? So we got evade. What else? Radioactive. So your reflective coating, if you got it, and your radioactive armor. Keep going. Can you think of anything else or no? All right. Any damage you can put out if you've got your missiles retro, it'll help. If you've got your missiles retro, if you use agility system and you retro that, obviously the stun resistance goes up and the slow resistance goes up. So you know, Agility that, system. Yeah, that's going to help you out a massive amount versus the obviously the stun cannons on the Reaver Hulk. Yeah, I think... The, the agility system is the big one because you see people putting guidance system on and trying to get their evade up as high as they possibly can. Actually, you want to stop being stunned by that big ass ship because it's the torpedoes that will do the most damage to your lead ships. Yeah. They hurt like hell. I want torpedoes yeah. like that. And if, you can't out, if, you can't outrun, if you can't outrun them because you're slowed. Yeah, and, and, and then again, you've just come on to another point. If you're struggling out running them, do you need to upgrade your engines? You know, where's your fleet at? When you're thinking of a dredge build, look at your fleet and think, right, what, what killed me? What did me the most damage? Or what, what couldn't I get away from that then inevitably yeah. killed me? And look at them, right, how do I improve that? Where retro? I mean, like, um, like Mike said before, I mean, you know, if Mike's got his cat on the ship, I don't know what the hell he's going to get away from, but it's that <laughs> big-ass cat. <laughs> but, um, you know, Mike will have to, prime example, if Mike's cat's on these ships, he needs to retro his engines because that's one heavy-ass cat. <laughs> yeah, but it'll eat the little ships. And not only that, it's like if you're using Mastodons for, like, the higher end, you want to keep your lead ship at the, you know, the maximum range that you can. It's like you don't want it to get close. You want it to keep it away as far as possible. I've got a little video um, which I put up last week, which I'm just going to show you all now. I'm just going to uh, present it to everyone in a minute. Um, what I'll do is I'll talk you through why I fit it the way that I fit it and stuff. Um, 
that's probably the easiest way of doing it. So this is a 61 dredge with uh, a fleet similar to what Panda come up with, except I've used uh, a frost burn as my lead ship, and uh, I've used a jug X as a tank. So. I mean, I tank. Yeah, so I've come in from the top. It's just personal preference. So I just like doing it because I can usually take out most of the small ships, and that's what I've helped. Is this all our 61, by the way, Earth? This is a 61, yeah. Yeah, yeah top or bottom, always coming at 12 or 6. It's going to be great. You're going to watch him noob it now and die and look silly. <laughs> <laughs> so bring your fleet across. Like that. Um, so you've taken out the top ships. Bring your fleet across so it's still out of the fire from uh, from the all of the turrets. Um, let these ones that come and chase you come and chase you down. And then you want to try and turn in. I mean, I tr turn in a bit later, but you could turn in a little bit earlier and take those two ships out as well. Um, and yeah, just that one. Hit. As you come into range, like now, you can see that the jabs are firing. So you want to bring your frost burn to the side. Um, and send that over in one way, and you want to send the rest of your ships away from it because all of the damage um, from the turrets is all splash damage. To reduce your repairs, send one ship off, just use it as a distractor, so it's drawing all the fire away from from all the rest of your ships. Bear um, in mind that the uh, the frost burns want to take out the napalm fire and yeah. And so you know, that's the reason that I use the na the um, frost burn because you know all of the fire just puts it all out. So um, as you get to this point, you know you can target that rocket there, and because those ships are coming in from behind, the frost burn slows them down. Come away from them, kills one, retarget goes into the next one. Click the yep. one that's coming up in front of you, slowed down by the, the frost burn like that. Yeah, so you got that. And then you want to turn it and bring it down so that you've got the same spacing again. So that the frost burns taking all the fire and the mastodons and stuff ain't taking nothing. Um, yep. There's no antis on this fleet because um, it's it's one of my basing fleets basically. Um, we've just the I've swapped out two ships for one ship by putting in um, putting in jug X. So you want to try and get down that meteor mort as quick as possible. And you can see yep. uh, you can see that I've done this on a on a Wednesday because a full second mission popped up so. Um, Tuesday even. So you got got that. Get your platform down. So when once once you meet them, yeah. up, hey, you can bunch your stuff up because the frost burn is going to extinguish any flames that are going to come. Okay. And then bring your jug X down and just to target the bottom ship. So once you get just about in range, you can start turning. Bring the rest of your feet to follow in behind and fire over the top of it. Yep. And Bring it round, comes into target in range. That demolishes it. Doesn't get in range to hit you with any rockets or anything, you know. And because of the massive evade on the Dug X, you know you're not taking as much damage from the weapons that it is firing at you as you would. And it's just as easy as that, really. Are we um, going to break it down into what you've actually got on the fleet? Let's see, That's just that you've got. I think it's like it's pretty. That looks identical to the ones I'm running, but just different leads. Pretty much. Yeah. So it's pretty much the same builds. What Panda's got um, on the Jug X, it's just all evade armor. Um, just bumps of evade up massively. It's got one cutlass on it, same as Panda's um, spotters, um, and it's got uh, MC3 on it, um, Guidance Scrambler 3. And um, speed system three, sorry, strike system three on it. Um, same with the frost burn, you know. So it's it's all good stuff. And as you can see there, that's three hours, thirty minutes, and forty three seconds. So seven coins in forty three seconds to repair that. Yeah, and affordable. it goes back to the key of um, keep your mass alive, keep your cost down. Joe, you know, another good thing is as well, people always ask me why I'm doing it and think I'm a noob. And actually, you've got a spare slot there. Stick a gumbo in. Let it take the first volley of all the jab fire rather yeah. than your frost. You know, simple things like that. People not having a go at you, by the way. <laughs> just 
good. I've done that. I, I've always, sometimes I've run two, three gumbos. It's one shot that you need, don't take. Well, they all open up at the same time, don't they? And you think those torpedoes hitting you, inst- hitting that instead of your frost makes a big difference. Yeah, something that's instant repair. And, you know, if it's, if it's get sending off a big volley, obviously you're right. If you could stick a gunboat in there, stick it in there and just keep it out of the way until you need it to go and take down that last hulk and send that yeah. out and get, get, get damaged instead of your jug that will cut a bit of time off. Yeah, no, agreed. Uh, is that Rig? Welcome back. It is. Hey, hey, welcome. This is dedication. So whilst we talk about dedication to the community, as certain people do, Rig is at work in his car supporting. Well done, Rig. Love it. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, actually, I just finished up work, and I have about an hour drive home. Decided just to stay on location, send everybody home. I'm done for the day. Now it's my time. So, oh, good man. Happy so, to be here. We just run for a couple. We just showed the the dredge, the dredging build, um, and a few interventions that you, uh, that you can use. Interventions, my God, just stop drinking this wine. A few <laughs> different versions of interchangeable hulls. Is there anything you want to add, mate? What do you use on on J Boy? You know, Rig. What do you guys use on dredges, Stephen? Be good to get everyone's input because it's we're kind of covering off what we use, but we're all at different p- levels. No, I mean, I'll, I'll use Harlocks, Mastons, anything really. My atlases still go pretty well for them. Admittedly, I can only hit one of them, but I'm a bit impatient as well, so I do kind of rush for them. But, mm. yeah, I mean, even my old NCs, they can do one. I'll, mm-hmm. I'll post a uh, build to them later on because I ain't got nothing they set up. And I was showing earlier on before we went live, I could do a whole mission on that same fleet. I could do a drag base on that same fleet. So it's, yeah. it's an all round. It's a good fleet if you've only got old stuff because it's all old stuff on there from when nuclear cruisers first come out. So, I mean, it'd be worth maybe some of the lower levels looking out or something like that if they ain't got the corns or they've only got low tech am stuff. So. Am I right in saying, Jay, that you use um, an anti missile Triton with it? Yeah, I've got an anti-missile and anti-mortar Triton, just one Triton with them both on there, and also an anti-mortar on each one of the NCs as well. Alright, cool. You know, so, I, I use something similar to Earth, I mean, but I use a R5 Berserker, so I use two Mastons, a Frostburn and the R5 Berserker for the dredges, and the one do thing a similar I, sort of thing. The one thing I will say though is that the evade's not as high on your uh, R5 Berserker, and it's yeah. also it's one and a half times repair cost in it, whereas a Jug yeah. X isn't. So you know it is. The only reason I use it because my Jug X in that fleet is um, one percent overweight, so I need to refit it. But all right, cool. Yeah, that's yeah, that's the only reason I need a Berserker. But yeah, I'm just you know if you're conscious of repair times, try and use um, stuff that's you know only a hundred percent and not like hundred and fifty like the, the Zerks and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I always have a habit of uh, using my jugs uh, simply because of the high <laughs> high evade. <laughs> ah, Rick Pig uses his jugs. Sorry, that's just a child in me. Carry on. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> but after seeing uh, what Steve uses for uh, for his uh, dredge fleets, that's yeah, it's definitely have my attention drawn to it another direction. Yeah, because, uh, his, re- his repair time is way way lower than mine. Oh, basically, I'm the frostbone with two mastons on my one. And yeah, I can clear about three each time. But that's just like I said, Tudor again. I'm I'm impatient and I always just run into it all and just like to get it over with. I'm a bit of a I'm a bit of a dredge horse, so I like to be in and out fast. I'm glad to wife ain't in the room with that one. I like to be in and out <laughs> fast, so I can uh, get as many as I can in. See the yeah. one thing the one thing I like about the frost burn is the fact that it extinguishes the fire. And the fact that it starts people snagging you as well. Yeah, definitely. There's not many people who grab my fleet now. I mean, when I used to them with, say, a Grim or Zerk or something in the front, there was always an injury me at the tower just so they can get to it or they do it just for fun. Well, what I really liked about the Frostburn and what I saw with Steve there was is how he was using that, uh, that ring to slow things down as those uh, ships are coming around. You can see him steer... 
and um, you know use that to his advantage to slow those things down and have his mastodons take him out and then carry on with uh, with the rest of the dredge. Yeah, it's definitely an advantage, and and like I said, I mean I know that Jay uses just the one, um, just the frost burn in there, but you know by sticking that jug X in there that I've got in there. Um, you know, I can do like six before I need to repair because um, I can use that as a distractor if my frost burn dies. Um, yeah, I mean, there, there was times I used to use my full baser that I used for it bases, like you said, and I've got the two zircles and then the frost and then the two mastons. And just the same, I mean, if I want to spend my time, I can eat a lot more of them, but it's just me, myself, I'm really lazy and get bored fast, so I like to get in and get yeah, out and have fun, but. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's your own preference, isn't it? If, if you want to sit there and spend the time, then you're going to get a lot more out of it. Oh, definitely. Um, I mean, what I usually do, it, because usually I save up um, irradiated cutthroats crews for dredge days, so what I'll try and do is I'll try and do as many with one fleet in one run as I can before I send it home and repair it. Yeah, so. if I've got a crew on, I will spend, spend the time. So one thing you can do if you've got a crew as well say like you, your fleet can do however many dredges at once if you've got fleets that can, can't exactly do the dredge but prep the dredge then you can send your fleets out to prep them and then jump into the masterwood with your cutthroats on on your frosty fleet and just hit them, up, hit them one after the other what we do in, um, in THE it's a general rule is um, you know Two or three of us, if if there's two or three of us that are on, and um, we've all got cutthroat crews, what we'll do is um, we'll take it in turns to prep for each other. So like the two of us will prep so that one's got you know running around um, hitting afterwards and getting as much uranium yeah. as possible, and then switch places. Because you can map, you can actually max if you if you help you get your nice help here with a cutthroat, you can max out in one uh, wave. You can actually max yeah. it in one way if you get your friends to help you. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, I, I see a lot of groups doing that. Sometimes if uh, my group's not on, which is like really rare, I uh, will send two or three fleets out. Two of them will prep, and then my uh, cutthroats will be on my jugs. Take out that one, and as I'm sending it back over to the other fleets, there, I'll already have those other ones prepped so that my uh, cutthroats come in with my jugs and yeah. take off two more. You walk away with 18 grand every time. So. Yeah. I mean, nine, nine times out of ten, I mean, I can... I can prep two, maybe three, and then because I've prepped, already prepped them, I can then do another one on its own, so I can do like four or something, you know, in one hit, because I've prepped two, I've prepped two or three of them, and get the cut for it, so I get the double. Yeah, I think so, so, so a lot of people out there now, you see, what would you say the main fleets are that you see people, even non-coin has now probably got Atlas, Nuke Cruisers? I think... V2s, mate. A lot of people have yeah, V2s. V2s. Yeah. I think pretty much every man in these dogs got a V2 feet, really. More, two, more V2H V2 as well. V2 more than anything. The missile version. <laughs> yeah. Jay, have you still, uh, what are you using? Gretas or Nuke Cruisers? Still. What's that, mate? Sorry. Your, uh, your NC Triton? Oh, just ask actually whether you want me to spit the stir. Yeah, yeah, pop it up, mate. It, you know, we've got to think. We're, not everyone's got our, the big fleets yet, so anything we can do on the show, we cover. And then anything we've missed, or so if the lower levels feel we haven't covered it off, or the, the non coiners, we'll, we'll pick it up on next Saturday's show and do a show on on lower bills. This, you know, this is what this is all about: helping helping the community. Um, what I also want to suggest as well is um, if you have got the ability to build mastodons. Get them built because they're so useful for so many things. You don't even need to arm if you drive them right. You don't need to arm them for dredges and stuff like that. If you drive them correctly, doing drag bases, um, for doing for doing dredges, for for hitting bases, for doing the forsaken mission. They they're so versatile. And all you got what you got to think of is you need to build two mastodons, and then you can interchange any of your other three slots. To, to suit the purpose which you're using them for, you know it's they're so versatile that you only need to yeah. build two and you can make six or seven different fleets out of it. Yeah, well, I thought you said I mean, 
we 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 watched you drive yours and like them mass didn't ta- didn't really take a hit. So theoretically, if you drive them correctly, you don't need armor on them. So you're cutting down on build time. For sure, for sure. Jay, you wanted to share a build. I'll share yes, it. Right. Um, as long as it's coming up, all right. Yeah. Yes, my NCs and like I said, it's, it's old stuff from when the NCs not long first come out. There's nothing high grade on there. It's all stuff you can win quite easy. But yeah, I'll, I'll run three of these. As you see, what the build is there, and I will post on the page later on. And also have in with it this Triton, which works tremendously well. I, I can clear. I mean, a whole mission you can do with one fleet. If you've got the time on your hands, you can sit there in auto forties all day long and clear up the tier four on about three quarters of a fleet, and it works well. Um, jack bases, you can hit a whole jack base, including the two towers, as long as you take your time and obviously don't go crazy and rush in. You can do a whole jack base with one fleet. Um, dredges, you have to be a little bit wiser because obviously the boats have a lot of high grade. But I have quite a few times managed to hit one dra- uh, one dredge, sorry, with this exact same build as I've got here. So you don't have to have all the big ships running all the time or anything like that. These, these are all exactly the same and like I said, they work, so just it's just an idea for people who don't have all, all of the tier 4 stuff or ain't had the time to win any of the new stuff. The old stuff still works, you've just got to take your time with it. And don't forget, if you haven't got the uh, the blueprint for the nuclear cruiser, you can obviously do the campaign uh, to get the Greta nuclear cruiser as well. Believe it or not, I used to have this Triton in with my MCXs. I ain't got them no more. Um, them ones are just a standard old assault fleet. <coughs> but it, they used to work well with my MCXs or missiles with yeah. that in there as well. You can't get as much done, but I mean, it still works well with them. So if you ain't got the MCs, maybe look at the MCXs with the Impulse fleet on. Works almost as good. Um, I, saw, I said it before, I mean, the key thing about, say, the Mini Rad, for example, a lot of the things hit you with mortars, so an anti triton with anti mortars and stuff on it is like key. A triton is like really valuable if you got if you know yeah. most would have them. The more you can shoot down, the more more missiles you can shoot down, the less damage you're gonna get. So, you know, they're worth the weight in gold. They're worth every single ton in a, in a fleet build. Especially you can even yeah. doing stuff. Well, and the other, another thing. another point on the weekly is if uh, if you're trying to do it with a sub lead with a lower with like the Mercury's we were showing, if you get your speed above twenty, you can stay out of the mortars. And the other thing yeah. is if you ain't got a chart and if you're sitting there panicking, the Harlock chart and does work just as well. You have to work a little yeah. bit on the campaign to win it, but you only need to win that one. And but everyone can get access to that. Exactly. So that's what I'm saying. If if you ain't got the chart and it's not the end of the world, you just have to stretch out a little bit more when a Harlock Triton and then build, build exactly the same thing but with a Harlock. Instead. You would need one of them. It's actually uh, the, the Harlock Triton's got better um, bonuses on it anyway, cause it's like an R6 Triton in it, so you know, you, you're going to get better bonuses for your countermeasures anyway. So, yeah, same for uranium plus the retrofitting. Yeah, so get in there, get a couple of um, Harlock Tritons if you can get them. Because then you know they're awesome. Even in base defense, um, they're going to help out a little bit at lower levels and stuff. Um, shoot down some mortars and come in and get some pieces. So, <clears throat> definitely I, worth it. I remember the last show we were talking about how there was a slight change in the dredges there. There might be a little bit more difficult. Has anyone noticed a change in the, uh, the mini raid? I, I yeah. kind of thought it was a little, little bit easier this time. Paying out in nine two three though, it always paid out in nine four four. Sixty five is paying out in nine two three now, or it did tonight anyway when I did it. That's what I've always got from them. It's yeah, no, I like the four four. The payout was the same, but I just noticed myself doing a little bit more with the minis uh, with my uh, jug fleet. I was kind of surprised. I was thought that was kind of odd. Well, I, I take the time to drive the sub decoy, and I haven't finished it. I just started it before the show tonight, 
and I've done two sixty fives for zero damage. So more. <laughs> the 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 stage is yours, Mike. Yeah. What what's I'll, that? I'll hit. The stage is yours. Fire away. I, How'd you do that? Well, it's, it's what we talked. It's what we talked about earlier. I I use Mercury's with. I have a Nighthawk decoy. The speed on the fleet is. I got it up to twenty four. So I don't even have to worry about the mortars. I run straight past mortars, and uh, I go in. I take quarters. I go in with my Nighthawks and take the fleet out. Then I take my Mercury with the Nighthawk sub lead, and I go in five times to max out on the resources. And I end up filling my warehouses up. And as long as I don't make any mistakes with that fleet, I can do the uh, I can do the whole weekly for zero damage. But it takes me about four, actually, four or five hours. Me and Mike actually made a video of him doing that. If you want to see that, it's on the Battle Pipes crib already. Now we need to make another one because I drove like a noob on that one. I, I, a tip, man. <laughs> I've got one out there on my YouTube channel of same thing of doing it with 65s and subs and sub decoy. I'll link that one out there on the page as well. Yeah, put that on the page too, Stephen. Be good to get that out so people can see at least the mini as well. And and just just to mention it, the the sub decoy you can use it in the drag base as well. If you've got the Mercury Hall and a and either a Spectre or a Nighthawk, you can start hitting drag bases. Definitely. Definitely. Um, just um, just a couple of comments from chat, guys. So um, a lot been going on. So Charvel Respo says, Gay Boy 657 wasn't born with a penis. He's only a cock shaft. <laughs> Not sure what he's on about. And now he's just oh, I can see that myself, actually. I was sitting here laughing. And uh, Charvel has now put Stephen W hasn't tried to peep Will Harbin's beep for 15 minutes. Um, my response was we couldn't Charvel because you were doing it. Enjoy. Yeah. You know what? I'll put it this way. Just because I don't pander to cheating and exploiting doesn't mean that I'm towing the company line. There's issues with this company that everybody else says, and I'm all for bringing out issues. As anyone knows it's, that knows me. Yeah. Fuck off. <laughs> you could just, you could just you ask to shovel your account. Stephen uh, says have some of that. Yeah, so, if I'm honest, other than the Windigo bug, I'm actually happy with the changes. Yeah, I think they're right. I think there's a few more bugs. There's definitely a flak one. I don't care what anyone says. I'm going to prove to the world that's right. I've got a video to show Earth later to tell him he's wrong. <laughs> um, I, I, yeah. I said to you, I said to you, there's definitely... Something up with the uh, with the flax, mate. I agreed with you. Yeah. So. Yeah. So it's been funny. Although I've, I've I think we figured something out, but we'll we'll update you on that in next week's show. Mm. Um, and I think I'm guys, KD is going to kick your ass if you don't answer him soon as well. I know he's from Sheffield. I'm a bit scared. They're, they're nasty <laughs> people. Then they look like they all look like Rob Darth Yoda's. <laughs> does, does, does anyone not think you, Rob looks like a, a Yoda wannabe tonight? Let's have a <laughs> little bit. Someone yeah. click on his let's, face. Let's, let's, the Force is with you. Let's hear Rob say, mm. "Look at your face, I will." No, Lady Jane, I fancy. How would you like to hear you? <laughs> <laughs> Lady Jane, I want to go balls deep. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway, all fun. Sorry, Jay. I love you to bits. Um, guys, is there anything anything we want to do before we do a Rob Carmody special ending? Oh dear. Anything at all? No. No, I was uh, only on for the last half of the show, and I've 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 learned a ton already. That's what I love about this show. Uh, every, every time I'm on it, watch it, I always always learn stuff. Yeah, guys, and just to say what Rig is, you know, you know where the page is. Put up what you want us to go through. This this one's mm. for you. Um, we're not we're not here to just read slides and go through updates. So we're we're here to help. And like we say, if anyone needs any particular help, there's the Battle Pirates crib page which you can message. Um, there's a lot of activity on it. If you want, we've got a lot of admins on there. If you want specific help, it message the page and one of the admins will pick it up and reply. If you want one of us to pick it up, then say who you want to ask the question to and we'll support you on it guys but lots of support out there this is this is support for 
generalization as a community and also if you want individual support please PM the page what we're here for we're here to make your life easier so please keep watching keep viewing keep liking the page keep telling us what you need us to see um, and uh, if that's everything guys we'll go into the ending Rob this yeah. is an interview with you hang on one sec I just want to add a couple I was going to say one thing wait wait yeah, go on, guys. Well, I wasn't going to warn about a fucking interview what the fuck? Carry on, uh, hang on, we'll tell you in a minute. <clears throat> Basically, um, all I wanted to say is I'm going to stick together a couple of builds and stick them on the um, Battle Park Squid page. If you're not there already, it's facebook.com forward slash group forward slash the Battle Park Squid. Um, I need to give a shout out to um, the All Sectors War Room for allowing us to post our vids and stuff on there as well. Um, thank you very much for your support. Um, I did say that I'd give him a shout out, even though he is from Blackburn. So, <laughs> and also Flying Sponge because he's he's gone into caps locks now. He's doing a trailer. Oh so dear! Before he has a heart attack, Flying Sponge, we love you. One one thing I was going to say is why he's uh, going back to you know take the help the help you and that the strike owls are very underrated. People don't use them very much, and they're easy to get access to. Yeah, they're available from normal salvage. They're yeah, so good. they're very they're very useful. I mean, the damage is very underrated. If you can't get the bees. Cool, cool, guys. So, and the the, the final part of the show, guys. So, Rob, how long have you fancied Lady J? Most of his life. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> Rob. This, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you know, I, you've kind of made a rod for your own back with Lady J's awesome tag. No. So. We, we all want to know. Come on, come on. That was a what, does he about, what does he about you like so much? Rob, this isn't a dating show. This is an informative <laughs> show. This is one day. You're not here to yeah, get yeah. laid. <laughs> Still a black. <laughs> so, guys, we'll also be putting another vote. Um, a poll on does Rob fancy Lady J? Yes or no? That will be going on the page, um, and we'll have to see everyone voting. All right, but guys, thanks for tuning in. Really appreciate it. From Rig Pig, who's sat in his car, to Darth Yoda drinking a beer, who likes Lady <laughs> J, to Gay Boy Six Five Seven, Mike, break. I'm a pussy pie, and oh, I'm you panda. <laughs> Take care. Oh, you, you got it, panda. <laughs> thanks for coming. Bye.